uh, that is uh, Boris Johnson there. And we want just to buckle down to what also was trending. That was one of the items there. Uh, Asha Fox, good morning. Good morning, Dibel. Yeah, and I know you've been doggedly following this as well. But the question is, uh, at the end of the day, uh, this was bound to happen. Looking at uh, uh, the string of resignations that we saw, uh, 40 ministers, you know, uh, downing the tools and saying, no, we do not believe in uh, the leadership of Boris Johnson. Uh, he was bound not really to run a government. That was a paralysis in itself, isn't it? Mm -hmm. What are people saying? Um, yeah, it's just a surprise, number one, are the resignations that are there, because, you know, just comparisons again with what happens in Africa. Um, there have been uh, guys trying to make uh, parallel, you know, mm -hmm. comparisons mm -hmm. to this. And just wondering, would this have happened here, you know, where guys are willing to resign from their jobs because they don't support the person who's in um, office to, you know, lead them through and then, you know, eventually culminating in the person who's in office actually uh, stepping down. So it's mm. just been comparisons left, right and center and a lot of banter around that as well. Indeed, indeed. And that is not just the issue that is operating on the international arena. We had the Fox News General Assembly Compango as well and the fire of a, a Kenyan pregnant woman a voting remark. What did she say? <laughs> Um, yeah, so this uh, Fox News presenter had, you know, made some comments talking about um, how in Kenya pregnant women are not allowed to go out, uh, get out of the house, which, you know, limits the voting rights for women in Kenya. Women are not allowed to vote, stuff like that. And she's come out actually to stand by her comments and say that, you know, she's, she's good with what she said, no apology. Of course, Kenyans have gone online to demand an apology uh, from her. They really trolled her. There's a lot of trends around this as well. Guys are wondering which Kenya she's talking about. That's, that has actually been the main question. Which Kenya are you talking about? Is it the same one that we're living in here but what, what was the context of the conversation uh, that's 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 the issue actually <laughs> <laughs> we don't even know where this came from but we just have this one clip from because we're talking about um, election rights and voting and you know gender uh, related conversations and then this came up and she gave an example of you know Kenya and she also gave an, an example of you know another country where uh, women are not allowed to vote um, uh, on by their own choices, you have mm. to vote based on what your uh, husband, uh, the person your husband is voting for, that's the person that you would vote for. So then now she then went in to give an example of Kenyan uh, women, pregnant women are not allowed to leave the house, and that means that even when it comes to voting, then the women are not allowed to um, vote. That limits the voting rights, basically. That's mm. what she had gone on to see. And, you know, Kenyans are like, so we have... Um, which Kenya is trending? Because guys are asking her, which Kenya are you talking about? Of course, herself, Emily Company is trending. Fox News is trending. Pregnant is trending. Election is trending. Um, voting is trending. There, there are like six trends all surrounding this topic. And guys are wondering, which Kenya are you talking about? Because um, factually, pregnant women are actually given priority uh, in voting in Kenya. So when you go to queue, when they, you're pregnant, you go ahead of the line in front of anyone else. If you're carrying, uh, if you're with a young child, you're also given priority to go vote ahead so that you can go back and, you know, take care of yourself, get some rest. So it's just a comment that really didn't sit well with Kenyans and KOT have really um, gone harm on this. Just trying to correct her and, and obviously get some sort of apology, both from Fox News and from Emily herself. <laughs> All right, let's just listen to what she had to say and why really Kenyans, uh, they've blown their gaskets on this. Um, and uh, the insularity of these celebrities is so asinine to me. It's so nauseating because these comments are totally delusional, right? So she's talking about like what, what voting rights? Yeah. That we have less voting rights here. What about in Kenya, where pregnant women can't leave the house, so they absolutely have no constructive right to vote? Or in Oman, where women have to vote as their husbands do? Or yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was it. <laughs> the, the, the other thing that you know guys are really concerned about is no one mm. in the room because as you can see there's a lot of people in there no one in the room could correct this <laughs> it's factually um incorrect All right yeah. uh, indeed because uh, it shows the reality uh, of the fact that you do not know what is really happening on the other part of the world just as we maybe we could uh, give uh, some false statement that we don't they're not really factual at the end mm. of the day so she'll cut them some flak, you think? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> KOT, KOT, operates, KOT wouldn't. it operates differently. They operate differently. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so back home, what is really interesting is not really about uh, the, the rights of women uh, voting, because I think uh, everyone knows the reality on the ground here in Kenya. 
everybody has a right to vote as it is and even women uh, for that matter yeah, we have some of them also who uh, are running for big positions but this is what is also trending um, the protests that uh, we see the pictures here this is a protest over the cost of living and we can see someone uh, carrying a sophoria here uh, if uh, my director may just pick it up i mean this is serious uh, so the protests are not just happening in Kenya as well, also in the UK protest is there and one of the things that uh, has led to res resignation of Boris Johnson is, is handling of uh, the cost of living over there and we saw the Chancellor um, the, of, of the Treasury there also resigning at the end of the day. Um, yeah, so it's, it's still something that guys are crying about the cost of, I think I have constantly mentioned this is a trend that comes up several times a week actually and mm -hmm. and there's a lot that goes on so yesterday guys actually took to the streets so it's not just online that we're talking about yesterday guys were on the streets in nairobi um mm. cbd protesting about the cost of living and as you can see from some of those photos you know guys have gone out to the sufurias some went mm -hmm. out to the mwikos you know uh some went out to the plates you know written no food no election because mm -hmm. it's it's a terrible um situation that we're in really and um the interesting thing is you know to the world out there um we want to show them that you know we're good but inward mm. we also want to you know put the government tax task and figure out what plan do you have for us and i think that's why they're also linking this um to the election as well because the focus has been um there's all these manifestos that are going out you're talking about plans on building roads on you know doing this and that for us but at the end of the day do we have enough um food and food actually came up as the bit of cost of living came up food came up as one of the largest um complaints that people have and again as you can see from the photos it's mm -hmm. all with the sufurias and the plates and the muikos and uh the placards complaining about food so do we have food to actually um make us strong to build these dreams that you want us to build for Kenya. That's something that, um, you know, Kenyans are really crying about and uh, we're hoping to hear soon from or whoever we need to hear from mm -hmm. the government, I'm guessing, uh, to tell us when this is going to happen and how this is going to get sorted out for us. But still on the issue of cost of living, it's not just a trend in Kenya as well, we also have another um, international trend going on as well. and. Um, Sri Lanka, um, mm. they're also not doing too well. The mm. inflation mm. is up to 60%. You know, um, they've, they've closed down. Like, people are not going allowed to go out and, you know, just use fuel as they want to. Fuel has been capped. You're only given fuel as priority, you know. So when you go out, what do you need the fuel for? Schools have been closed because when you go out, you end up, you know, when you go to school, you use fuel on the roads to go to school. You have to eat while you're at school. You have to, there's a lot of money that goes into sustaining the economy. economy and that economy is collapsing, basically. So, yes, there's um, cost of living. It's an issue not only just here in Kenya, it's also happening globally in other places. Like you've mentioned, even in the UK, there have been protests uh, around this as well. Mm -hmm, indeed. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, even as uh, we continue with uh, what is really trending, there's uh, news that is just also trickling in into our studios uh, this morning. And this is about Shizo Abe, who has been shot while making election uh, speech in Japan. Shizo, that is Shinzo Abe, Japan's longest uh, serving a minister, the uh, prime minister, was shot on Friday while campaigning for a parliamentary, which is today actually, a parliamentary election with public broadcaster NHK, saying a man armed with an apparently homemade gun opened fire at him from behind. Uh, prime Minister Famo Kishida uh, said Abe, who is now 67, was in grave condition. Uh, he condemned the shooting in the western city of Nara during the campaign for Sunday's upper house election as an unacceptable attack on the foundation of Japan's democracy. Once again, uh, Shinzo Abe has been shot while making uh, election speech in Japan. Shinzo Abe, Japan's longest serving prime minister, was shot on Friday, which is today, while campaigning for a parliamentary election with public broadcaster NHK saying a man armed with an apparently homemade gun opened fire at him from behind. Prime Minister Famuo Fumio, I should say, Kishida said, uh, Abi, or Abi, who is uh, 67, was in grave condition. He condemned the shooting in the western city of Nara during the campaign for Sunday's upper house election as unacceptable attack on the foundation of Japan's democracy. Earlier, a hospital official said Abi appeared to be in a state of cardiac arrest when airlifted to hospital, having or after having initially been conscious 
and responsive. Police said a 41-year-old man suspected of carrying out the shooting had been arrested. Uh, this is quote, quoted by NHK. Uh, that is the media. So we shall be giving you an update on this uh, for a story that we are following that is just uh, trickling into our studios uh, right now. And we do hope that, yes, he will uh, circle back to, uh, of course, consciousness and also good health at the end of the day. Well, all right, back to what uh, is trending this morning. I just want to continue with you, Asha Fox, on that uh, notes. Um, this is also what uh, is trending as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can uh, talk to us about this. Yeah, and, uh, you know, just as you've mentioned, that mm -hmm. has happened in Japan, and there's a lot of um, concern about the security and how violent mm -hmm. uh, you know things have become uh, just globally as well you know there's a lot of protests here and there there's um, shooting like did it really have to get to this the yeah, Indian, yeah. Indian um, uh, Prime Minister has also come out to say that you know um, she's he's gravely uh, affected by mm -hmm. this as well and we've seen um, messages coming in globally uh, around this just you know hoping for the best wishing him a quick recovery as well so really everyone is keeping an eye out on this just waiting to see what uh, happens and how this develops but um yes and also the security bit of it the biggest question around this has also been where was his security mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. and you remember that this is uh, you know both youngest prime minister of japan longest serving um prime minister and in 2020 he had stepped down setting ill health you know so it's not like he also left government on bad terms really um yeah so it's just there's a lot of uh questions and concern for his health and his well-being mm -hmm. on social media so that's why that has come up as a trend as well not just in kenya but globally Yes, and this is, you can actually follow it also on BBC as well. You can see uh, this is a particular video that uh, uh, maybe you can try and play for you so that you can see what re actually really transpired there. Footage from the scene of former Japan PM Shinzo Abe uh, shooting. Uh, I hope it will load up uh, quickly so that we can uh, try and uh, play it for you. Uh, this was a scene earlier, as you can see there. Let me try and uh, expand that so you can see. So this was a scene where he was shot. And courtesy of BBC and uh, you can see the, the forensic experts and police officers that are picking evidence uh, from that particular crime of sin as it is right now in critical condition in the hospital. Right, we shall be telling you more about this in our subsequent bulletins as well and give you more information. But uh, Asha Fox, back to you. Uh, we have sports. It's weekend right now. Uh, Friday is here. Thank God it's Friday, they always say. But what are we looking forward to? Um, yeah, I think with this weather, we need the fast and furious, you mm -hmm. know. Um, yes, yeah, so again, we have Formula One. This is, um, I know you want me to check out other sports again. Yes, well, indeed. But you know, yeah. <laughs> this is we, what's we trending. We need to shoot the hoops. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is what's trending and what, what is trending, or rather what will be trending this weekend for sure, um, will be Formula One. We have the Austrian Grand Prix. This is happening at the Red Bull um, Racing Ring. And, you know, this is a home of Red Bull, we're waiting to see what happens there. Um, last year, Max Verstappen um, took um, P1 and followed by Lando Norris of McLaren. And then we had, um, uh, uh, sorry, Sergio Perez mm -hmm. of Red Bull as well coming in third. Hamilton was, you know, knocked off the podium uh, that time last year. And we're hoping to see what happens this year. Uh, Mercedes has been limping, you know, to the podium and, you know, really trying to stay on top of things, especially Hamilton himself. And it was really good to see him in the Canadian Grand Prix where he got um, position three. Mm -hmm. And we're waiting to see will he take the podium again in Austria. And this is, it's bound to be a big trend. I think you should start watching Formula One um, Dibal. You, yeah, would, I you would enjoy this. Yeah, I, 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 <laughs> even as, I have magazines as well. Maybe I'll just show you what I normally read as well. So mm -hmm. I'm just trying to catch up a bit. So I've been being doggedly following uh, Formula One. I know it's very interesting, but uh, believe in me, uh, maybe not next Friday. I think it's too soon. Uh, <laughs> um, next month, we should say. But There's next month break. is elections, uh, so we're concentrating on elections more. Uh, yeah, but just maybe to blow off steam, uh, yeah. Formula One will be it. So yes. who is your biggest, uh, uh, just, uh, yeah, just for interest of just knowing, uh, who is your biggest uh, fan? Or, yes. or the, 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 the team I support? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, You're I the am, fan. I am a Mercedes fan. <laughs> I normally meet people saying, Hmm? You're my fan. You're my biggest fan. You're my fan. You know, you are my fan. 
Mercedes. So I, was, I was hoping that is not coming off your mouth. Uh, it's it's uh, not uh, coming uh, off uh, my phone. <laughs> 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 I am a Mercedes fan, uh, okay. diehard, uh, and for Lewis Hamilton as well. And there's been a lot. You know, it's not just about the sport as well. It's not always just about the fast and furious. There's a lot that comes out of this as well. Like um, recently, um, we've seen issues of racism just coming mm -hmm. out of you know this particular spot and there's a lot of awareness that yes, comes yes, out of indeed. this mm -hmm. so we've seen um racism you know remarks that have been made as well against lewis hamilton we've seen drivers suspended we've seen you know former uh leaders in the race having been told you know you have to stay off don't even come to the to the to the racing ring anymore because you've mm -hmm. seen such and such uh negative remarks and you know i think sports is also there's the fun bit of it, you know, but then there's also a place where guys can come up and talk about um, things that really matter. It's not just about at the end of the day, after all is said and done, we've watched the race and we're done. What um, impact are you mm. leaving behind? And I think with Formula One, there's been a big impact, especially in this um, month and the previous one. There's been a lot of talk around racism and awareness about, you know, stuff that concerns um, racism. and. It's, 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 it's good to see, it's good to see that as well. So mm. apart from just the racing and the fun and you know, the football, even now this football as well is trending. I've seen Fantasy League um, going up, guys are talking about that. Uh, guys are waiting for EPL to come up uh, next month. I think that's something good to look forward to as well, just before the election. But right now what we have uh, with us, the sport that guys are really, really looking forward to, it's Formula One this weekend, and this weekend we're in Austria. All right, just to, to show you that, uh, yes, I truly follow what is happening. Uh, I, I normally read this <laughs> magazine, just to flaunt. Yeah, Autosport, Essential Guide. This was in March. If my director may just pick it up. We yeah. have F1 2022. This is how it looks. Uh, better cars, new rules, different winners. Uh, some of these faces, of course, I know this I'm one. I'm going to ask you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So don't tell me to mention these faces. Just mention two. Just mention two. Uh, two uh, of the uh, people. Oh, oh, um, Verstappen uh, is that the name? It's Verstappen. Oh, Verstappen. <laughs> Max Max Verstappen uh -huh. and um, Louis um, Hamilton, of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Who is uh, this in the BP shell? Um, um, attire. Oh, so at the back behind Lewis Hamilton, that's um, Charles Leclerc, uh -huh. and then next to Max Verstappen we have. Um, Russell, that's uh -huh. George Russell uh -huh. of Mercedes, uh -huh. and behind him we have Landon Norris of McLaren. Mm -hmm. Yes. So these are the faces, fast and furious, endurance <laughs> and greed. Thank you very much. You're not going to learn sports from a so, magazine, though. You have to watch. No, the no, you need race. to. So, so that at least I know also some of uh, behind the scenes that normally happens there, the quick, the mechanics, the engineer.